Hey everybody, Ryan here, Ion Capital Solutions. Today I'm here with Christopher Van Buren, and we want to talk to you about expert consultation. All right, Christopher, thank you so much for being with us today. All right, thank you. Good to be here. Terrific, terrific. So, what the heck am I talking about? Expert consultation. Well, there's far too many salespeople out there in the marketplace that are essentially focusing on niche salesmanship, right? Just trying to sell the particular product, its rate, its term, right? Its function, whatever it is. And the problem with that methodology is you sound like everybody else. You know, many loan brokers sign up with the same lenders, offer pretty much the same products or similar, have similar terms, bells and whistles around them, whatever it is. It's not about selling the product. It's about consulting with the business the individual, the investor, whatever it is, whoever it is you're funding, and trying to diagnose whatever their issues are, whatever their needs are, not just today, not their immediate needs, but long term. Anyway, this is a topic that Christopher and I have both gone over in detail, and I thought would be a great conversation for us to share and help uh, existing and new and, and uh, aspiring brokers uh, pick up on really kind of what can separate you from the pack. So Christopher, you, have a, you do a terrific job of filling up your pipeline and just making sure that you have a consistent book of business. And it seems every client that you fund, you fund again and again and again. What's your secret? What is it that you're doing that's allowing you to kind of have that long-term relationship? Um, I, 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 really, it comes down to how I treat them in the beginning. Um, uh, again, I approach people not in the sense of an order, order taker, and I immediately position myself and gain control in my conversations by really being an advocate for them and really breaking down what are they trying to do and understand that we have an investor and I look at his track record. Um, I need to be talking after I've done my initial quantitative qualitative stuff is really finding out what are they looking to do and how they're looking to build their business and how I'm that right partner that can help them through that process. So, when I'm doing the deal that we're working on, I'm already talking about, well, what else do you have, you know, down the line? A lot of my clients I set up with, like, with exposure limits. And so I'm starting out brand new guys. I'm like, look, I'm, I'm going to give you $500,000 buying capacity. I'm going to give you $3 million worth of buying capacity. Let's talk about how you're going to utilize and, you, and put that money out there in the marketplace and utilize it. So I'm not just happy enough saying, oh, well, yeah, I got to, $500,000 limit, I'm like, okay, well, how do we go about spending that money sooner than later? Um, you know, I, I generally tell people during that pitch, you know, the first time I'm sitting up with a banking relationship, it may take us three, four weeks to get everything done. But once we get past that point, I'm knocking down my turn times within two weeks. And one of those abilities is while we're in process doing this deal and the bank's got your whole file opened up, let's submit another property and let's start talking about bringing that to fruition at the same time. So again, anybody who maybe has done one, two, three pro projects, I can constantly say, I can show you how to double your production because I'm already giving you the keys to the castle in right. the beginning. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I, a, an analogy I use a lot when talking to, to new brokers is, <clears throat> or even existing brokers who are, who are niche, for instance, somebody pushing equipment financing, somebody who's, who's pushing merchant cash advance, and just kind of staying in their corner. What happens when you come up against the mature business? I mean, imagine for a second, Christopher and I competing with each other for the attentions and affections of a business. Let's call it a construction group, right? And I'm, you know, Captain Equipment Finance, right? So I'm going to call them up and I have the best equipment financing out there. My equipment financing somehow better than everybody else's equipment financing. Our rates are lower. Our terms are longer, whatever it is. I don't sound different than anybody else. I'm just another person soliciting, trying to push them on a product, holding up a for sale sign. Whereas Christopher is going to dive way deeper. He's going to say, hold on a second. So you guys are a construction group, right? How do you function? Are, 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 is it residential properties you're focusing on? Is it commercial properties you're focusing on? Who owns these properties? Is it you? Is it somebody else? What is your, do you have an existing portfolio? What, what is your, how do you operate, right? Are these renovations or these new construction projects diagnosing if there's any issues in the business, understanding what the needs are of that business long term. Now, most mature construction groups have investment portfolios. 
So they're going to need money on the investment side, right? Bridges and cash out refis and and <clears throat> a purchase and rehab or some commercial, some residential. Maybe their models buy and hold and they're looking to, to, to get a long term mortgage, whatever it is. They have that side, but then there's the construction side, right? Sure, they need equipment financing, but most construction groups have a lot of contracts, other government contracts, right? Long-term contracts with clients. They can leverage those contracts for financing, right? Funding, whatever it is. We can issue lines of credit on the investment side, the business side. So the point I'm trying to make is niche salesmanship really only gets you so far and it kind of puts you in the same box as everybody else where you sound like everybody else as to, opposed to what Chris is talking about. I mean, he understands how to receive that first time client, how to get them established and set up and then establish a long term relationship and address all of their needs, you know, and that's a, a big difference right from the your average broker. And that's what people have to understand. And not many people talk about it. I mean, think about it. If you're watching this video right now, and you had a great client, you thought you had a deal, it looked like they were a shoe in you even pitched an offer, but they just never called you back. Why? It's because they talked to Christopher, or they spoke to somebody like him who understood their long term needs who understood how to properly consult who offered all the products in the marketplace, not just a single product. You know, anyway, I'm sure this resonates with you, Christopher, and, and more often than not, you're having these conversations. Let me ask you a question. What are some of the mistakes that um, you may be seeing, Christopher? Oh, I see you stepped away from the screen for a second. There you go. What are some of the mistakes yeah. that you're seeing from some of our students as they try and conduct surveys with clients? Um, wouldn't it be information overload? Uh, I think um, for new affiliates, they're thinking they need to sell everything, say everything, and really don't understand, maybe don't take the time truly understand the person on a personal level. Um, there's products and services, you know, there's different cars, there's different things, but we go with, and it sounds cliche, but we go with people who we, we, we know, like, and feel comfortable with. And so it's, it's just as important to yes, have your, you know, get down the business questions, but understanding the person, understanding their marketplace goes, you know, a, a long way. Um, I, I'll say I was on a follow-up call. Somebody sent on the email, funny story. She, I talked to her a couple of weeks ago. She remembered me. She's like, Hey, I got some stuff closing. I remember our conversation was great. I really want to, you know, increase my capacity because we talked about exposure limits. And then I was like, well, okay, so refresh me. What areas you, you she's into. And she happened to be in an area where I've done quite a number. I've helped quite a number of people in that area. And I name dropped someone who I've, I'm associated with. And she's like, Oh yeah, me and that person had this kind of great relationship. And the funny thing is, she was talking about a Christopher, but she didn't realize that it was me. <laughs> so, so you know, so uh, again, it's one of those things where one, I'm, I'm looking at it, blessings twofold. Is that one, I have people in the industry that have worked with me that are out in the streets working with people on a day to day basis, following my name up. But in two, you know, because of my follow up, because of it wasn't about me closing her that day. It was like all right, let me provide you the information. Let me give you kind of a, a, a funding plan, a, a, a blueprint of sort of what we could do that now that she's ready to put stuff together, she's like, yeah, send me your paperwork. Like, I was like, yeah, let's start putting together your paperwork. Let's get yourself prepared so we can jump up into this. So it, it's that relationship. Um, I realize if anybody seen me in my old videos <laughs> that I'm in, I always say I'm here for the long term. I This is what I do. Um, this isn't something, oh, I'm going to try, you know, and give up tomorrow. No, I, I'm invested in the success of the people I work with, uh, both affiliates, investors, whoever. We're a team. And if if you come off that way with your people, you will build your team of people. Um, you want to have it where I haven't sold real estate in God 15, 20 years, but I still have clients that can call me today and be like, hey, you know, I had a question about X, Y, or Z. You know, my life is changing. I'm looking for a second home, whatever it is. Again, being that trusted resource has provided me that opportunity that my book is ever expanding. You know, when I look back at last year, it wasn't a matter that I had to get so many clients. It was how did I get the most value out of the clients that I did come in and not lose them? I mean, even this morning, I got an email from a guy, literally, it's about a year since we did a deal. He's like, 
I just finished up my project. Oh, I do remember you said something about this exposure line that I have. Is that still good? Well, sure it is. And, and you know, again, it was the little follow up here and there, the conversation guiding them through the experience, good, bad, or indifferent, just being that re resource has been the key to how I'm going to grow my business and continue to grow my business. It's like, right. I want to build my business on the referral of the next person and supplement it with other marketing strategies. You know, you know, I, I don't put all my eggs in one basket. I have learned that being in business, one basket, when it breaks, at least you would scrabble eggs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Absolutely. So yeah. I, I, I do try to diversify, but again, being in, the, in being in those different areas, it's like, yes, I still have to make new contacts uh, on my own that are cold. Um, but I do a really good job on warmer, warmer con contacts. I understand like, hey, I'll spend the time to warm up a group, isolate that group, and then focus in on them, give them the attention they need. Um, you know, when a deal goes, you know, if, the, if it, there's a problem with the deal, being accountable. Um, people appreciate that. The extra phone call, the extra email, the I ain't got good news, but I'm going to tell you how it is uh, type scenarios. Those are all the keys that kind of build you out and make you an asset for someone long term and not an order taker. You know, I want to be rememberable. You know, I don't want to feel like, you know, it's Chipotle, give me the number four. Right. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. And I think I think many people in this space or just in sales in general sort of miss that aspect of it. You know, I mean, there's it's about being a wealth of knowledge. Right. And and somebody who leverages their experience. Right. And, and, and about being a part of somebody's network and a go to when you have a question about a particular uh, part of the industry. Right. A necessary part that that individual needs. That's what people are looking for in sales. There's no such thing as a product, no matter what you're in. It's about the individual, the person. Does that person bring value Right. Is that value what I need to take my business to the next level kind of thing? And as you can see, Christopher does a terrific job of doing that so much so that years pass by and people will still call him up and ask him because they know he's a source of that information. And it's funny with the approach you have, Christopher, you're creating this sense of urgency, but the urgency is in we have to do a deal right now. We have to do it right now. You have to buy, 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 buy. That's not the urgency. The urgency is, hey, man, I'm a train. I'm a choo choo train. And with or without you, trains leaving the station, right? I'm doing business all day long, every day. When you're ready to board, you let me know. Here's your ticket next. And you keep moving. And every so often, sure, you shoot out an email, whatever it is. You let them know. You remind them, whatever it is. But people who are out there waving a for sale flag, trying to push a particular product and sell. The second a client says to you, oh, what's your rate? What's your term? And you start jumping into that conversation you're done. You're finished. You sound like everybody else. Just like Christopher said a moment ago, sometimes you have to have that hard conversation. You have to set somebody straight. Say, you know, that's not how it works. For instance, when somebody says to the two of us, what's your rate? What's your term? Why should I work with you instead of somebody else? And tries to, you know, put their broker cap on for a minute, even though they're a borrower. We click quickly explain our value to them. Like, listen, listen, we need to understand how your business model operates. In order for me to help you, you need to help me, okay? I need, to, I need you to answer questions so that we can diagnose the issue, we can see what you qualify for. Here at Ion Capital Solutions, we represent the top lenders in the real estate investment and business funding marketplace. Public and private banks, virtually every product out there, what it comes down to is what are your qualifications are a borrower? Is the deal even doable? Is the asset resellable or is the asset something that, that, that anybody's willing to invest in, right? Or provide coverage for? We have no idea. We don't even know who you are, how you operate. So how could we possibly give you a rate, a term? We can't. So we need to have a proper discussion here. And if you're not willing to have that discussion, well, good luck to you. And next, because somebody else is going to be willing to have that conversation, to provide those answers. And what that does is position us as the leader, Right. And then it comes down to, listen, the value of what we can provide to you is a quote for free within 24 hours without pulling your credit to let you know what's available to you in the nationwide marketplace. Not a problem, but we need information. So how do you operate? And then through that conversation, we're understanding how that business functions, what their past borrowing habits are, right, what their current needs are. And that lets us know what we can do in the future. It allows us to prepare. And through building that relationship, we're arming ourselves with information. 
and we're providing a plan. So when it's time to finally provide true value and offer the quote or put together the financial plan, whatever it is, we sound different than anybody else. And we come correct because we're informed. But if we run our mouths and we don't listen to the client, we don't gather the information we need, all we're doing is holding up a for sale sign and you're doomed when you do that. You're absolutely doomed, right? So <clears throat> another thing I think that's important to talk about, Christopher, and uh, we had mentioned this when we discussed this last week, was having a, a healthy flow and funnel of leads, right? And people to talk to. And many brokers, when they start out, they kind of want to know everything, how every single product works, right? How the game works itself. They want to set up the website and the perfect logo and sign up with lenders and do all the things they think that it takes to be a successful broker. And then they open up their gates and nothing happens. There's no business. Deals aren't funding. They don't know what to do. They start spending money on leads and going wild and crazy and deeper and deeper and deeper into the hole they go. And I think a great analogy for this is, you know, imagine all of us as brokers are fishermen, right? And we essentially stand by the river, right? We're tossing our bait in there. We're pulling out fish all day long, right? Well, here at Ion, we practice multi-platform lead generation. In other words, we don't pay for water, right? The river flowing. We don't pay for that water. It's just flowing. We know where to go. We have the fish finder. We toss our line in the water and we're pulling out fish left and right, okay? But imagine if you're buying leads, you're paying for water, and you don't know if there's going to be fish in there or not. How long can you keep that water running before you go out of business, right? And then when it comes time to actually fish and you find some interest, you find a client, how do you know you didn't pull a boot out of the riverbed and not an actual fish, mm -hmm. right? If you're not qualifying, if you're not underwriting, if you don't understand how your products work, how to qualify a client, whether or not they're, they qualify on, based on their financials, their affordability, the asset its resellability, whatever it may be, you have no chance <laughs> of making money in this industry. And so this is another thing I think people really don't understand, right? And Christopher, when new students come in here and you and I are kind of having a conversation with them about how to get started, the first thing we talk about is them setting up their marketing campaign, right? Getting that healthy flow of water going. And yet they, a lot of them kind of don't want to do that, right? They just want to sit back and pull out their notebook and take some notes and ask questions, but they're not active, Right. right. Can you elaborate? Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's, I always find that kind of interesting. But even, you know, we talk multi-platform approach, you know, I think people really have to maybe do a better job diagnosing what really is a lead. Um, there's data, which is done through, you know, we have organic methods that we collect data in. We have paid methods that are data, data points and stuff like that. But Everybody thinks, that, oh, I got leads. That's not the lead. <laughs> That's the data. And literally, you have to take your source of gathering your, your correct buyer profiles. And now you need to now segment that raw data into lead categories or lead buckets. And that's where people kind of drop the ball. They're all like, okay, well, what about, you know, how do I do a portfolio? How do I do a mobile park? And it's not really. It's just, no. How do you take the data that massive amount of data, no matter how you done it. Because some people, hey, they're going to pay for the for a name, telephone number, email address. Just to save them time. Like, look, I ain't got time to, to prospect organically. Let me just buy some names. But then they're like, oh, I got leads. That, yeah, no, you just, you bought data. And so people, in, it's not until you take that data and say, okay, now let me reach out to that data. That's why I need my marketing system set up. Have a way of doing that consistently but now I'm turning that data and I'm creating leads and I'm now putting them in the right buckets. Is this a hot lead? Is this a lukewarm lead? Are they dead, you know, you know, are, are good for the trash? And once you do that, you got this big pool of just raw data. You now have smaller buckets and then your life is literally about, okay, I'm working bucket A and bucket B and trying to throw people in bucket C. So A is A, they're ready right now. I'm going to do everything. Let's, let's build a relationship. Let's give them the information. Let's make it happen. The other people I'm nurturing, I'm educating, I'm staying in touch with, because what I realize is if you're looking for money today in the real estate market, you will be looking for money tomorrow in the real estate market. 
It's the one commodity that you're always going to need. We sell money, but who do, we need to identify who needs that money. And we can only sell that money to people who qualify for those services. And that's our job of any use of data is to find out, can I get them a bucket A, bucket B? And if they don't fit into bucket A or bucket B, I need to just put them in the right. discard pile. And no one seems to want to take that opportunity. And so they, you know, they got these massive lists there. Oh, I'm doing all the, the emails and, but they have no idea what that data equates to. And without doing that one step of sorting and understanding that's data <laughs> and what a lead is, this is where they're going to find that friction. And then they wind up burning out. They're going to spend money hand over foot, but still don't have a way of vetting the data, making the data, pulling out the gold or, you know, pulling out the gem, yeah. uh, you know, refining the, 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 the person, the, the relationships. And again, I build one relationship at a time and, I've been doing this, you know, successfully for a while now, and it's it works. I mean, the people I deal with, I can I've talked with for a number of years. I mean, I'm still that person. I'm still the guy. That, hey, you know, when your brother calls, you're like, hey, Chris, you know, I was looking at something today, and what do you think about it? He's not an investor, but he knows. Hey, if that's the area, I know somebody can handle that. And and once you do that, you will find a lot of success. In this endeavor or any endeavor that deals with sales in any way, shape, or form. Absolutely. It's a, it's a great point. I made a lot of great points there, actually. And I think, and this is sort of a shot at our competitors, there's a lot of quote unquote training programs out there that are telling new prospective brokers or people who are interested in becoming brokers that, hey, all you have to do is find an interested party who says they want money collect a few months bank statements and application forward to a lender and congratulations, you're a loan broker. And so it, it's spreading this misinformation that that's what loan brokering is. And it's not a borrower is looking for funding. They don't know what options are available to them. So they inquire your job as a broker is to be the go between your lender partner and that borrower. But you're not just an extension of the borrower. You, the borrower, excuse me, where you also have absolutely no idea what what to do, and you just forward that deal to a million lenders and hope that the deal works out. That's that's then you're no use to your part, your your applicant, right? And so our we we're professionals in our own right. We need to understand how to qualify, how to underwrite. We need we're not just trying to fit a square peg through a round hole. It doesn't. It doesn't work like that, you know, and I think that really is lost on a lot of people and, and it may not necessarily be their fault. I mean, I I talk to people on the phone every day who are interested in joining our program with horror stories of how they come from other programs. They spend thousands. I literally got off the phone with a woman yesterday who spent a hundred thousand dollars. Now, I won't name drop the program because I don't you know, want to put a negative video out again against anybody, but a hundred thousand dollars she spent on one of these programs she never funded a single deal she was given broken bits of information they didn't care whether or not she succeeded it was just you know hey if it looks expensive if it sounds expensive it must work so let me pay them a lot of money so that i can get a working business and guess what it didn't work i talked to another gentleman who spent forty thousand dollars pulled it out of his 401k a year later no deals funded why it's the same thing christopher was just discussing data equals intelligence equals money data does not equal money the leads that you buy are not really leads it's just data you need to sift through that and figure out where the lead is make no mistake about it we are in a riverbed sifting through the mud trying to find the gold Right, We need to understand our function, our process. And if we're not educated on how to properly qualify clients for a variety of products, whether they're unsecured, if they are secured, what, they're, what kind of an asset they're secured to, is it real estate, is it equipment, is it a vehicle, what type of assets you can even utilize to secure a loan, right? Do you, are you even aware? It comes down to resellability. Can that asset, in the case of default, be resold? On a cash flow side, is there affordability, right? If, if we're looking to purchase a piece of real estate, does the property 
line up? Is, is it stuck in forbearance? Is there a pattern of vacancy? Is there a default in, in, in the past? Is there is it highly rural? Is it a deal on wheels? Is it there's just all these little nuances, these things that you learn through experience. But if you're not aware of these things and you just find any old person who wants money and just forward to the lender, it's just not going to happen. It's not going to work out. And Christopher keeps mentioning that he has past clients that will follow up with him and continue to reach out. And that's where his repeat business is coming from. Stop and think. If Christopher didn't spend time properly educating his clients and providing value and insight into the industry and helping them understand the process correctly, if he didn't, they would never come back to him. If he was just taking their information and firing off to lenders and they're getting inquiry after inquiry on their credit and they're not getting the help they need, why would they ever call Christopher back? And where is the long-term model with that kind of mindset? There is none. You're just always going to be in a position of chasing down new business instead of rolling through that Rolodex. You know, I mean, how, how many of us in sales see that old guy on the sales floor? who looks like he's been doing this for 50 years and all the young guys are pounding the phones and they're freaking out and they're running around. You got that guy who's just sitting back, flipping through his Rolodex. Why? Because he spent 20, 30 years developing healthy relationships and networks of people that he works with and he's that expert and that's all he needs to do business. He doesn't need new business because he's got plenty of business already. That's the kind of mindset that Christopher has. He learned that. And so that's what we're trying to share with all of you today, right? Is essentially, how do you, how do you position yourself in the marketplace, right? What should you be focusing on, right? What are the important bits of being a business loan broker when it comes to having a healthy funnel and converting that data? And there's obviously a lot more to this, but... These are the converse, this is the conversation. These are the thoughts any person in loan brokering, whether you're experienced but struggling or you're doing this for the first time, this is where your head should be. Not trying to build a business, not trying to buy leads, not trying to, you don't want to start, imagine if we're on a, a line, right, about to begin a race. And before you start the race, you're going to dig yourself into a six foot hole. That's what you're doing when you start spending all this money on stuff you don't need instead of just from the, Right from the beginning, just start running. You got to get out there in the marketplace. Leverage experience, mentorship. You can do that here at Ion, or you can go take a job in the industry. Either way, that's much better than trying to just build your own business without any experience at all. Do you agree, Christopher? Oh, for sure, for sure. It's, it's uh, it, you know, so many things sound good. I mean, the bells, the whistles, the the zeros, the commas, the 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 life freedom. There is freedom. I am free to do th things, but it still requires work. Freedom and work kind of have to go hand in hand. Um, I do have the ability to dictate my schedule, but if I'm not feeding and doing my processes and have my processes in place, I will I will become stagnant. You know, I tell people, you know, new or old, anybody can potentially get lucky, hit a phone call hit, you know, and get that first deal and like, boom, oh, I made some money. But as soon as that money is spent, they're lost in the wilderness again, because they, they, they weren't doing the repeatable actions that they need to take on daily. Um, that brings the book in to me. Like when I close, like everybody hears me, when I talk about a closing, I'm like, dang, I need new deals to replace. If I close two, I, I need four more deals. Um, I, I, I close four, I need eight more deals because even the truth is, even when I have a pipeline, you know, you know I can say in the year I had a quite a significant pipeline, but life being what it is, Murphy jumped in and, you know, he put a, he put a, some kiboshes on a couple of those deals, but it didn't stop me from still generating income because I had my pipeline full. And so I constantly understand it's like I'm invested in my person's success. I'm not invested in the individual outcome of every particular transaction because i have to understand that some deals no matter what the intentions are can go sideways or will prolong for reasons that are out of our control you know there's a zoning issue that only happens to be this one property in this one area and anybody who's you know familiar with permits or something like that asking the city to get you some answers or anything is a drawn out process, but you have to be accountable to your lender, keep your lender in, in, involved, 
you know, keep your, your client engaged, keep the, you know, the sales attorney. We're all in it collectively to make things happen. And we're not coming up with issues to make them issues, but it's that constant stream of communication. So, you know, long term, that's what's been beneficial. It's it's having the processes in place, keeping the pipeline active, being accountable, reaching out, being per, uh, being a person, you know, at the end of the day. When a person calls up their physician, their doctor, where they, they want someone who they can speak with, has an understanding of, of who they are as a person, an individual, what they what their problems are, and help them walk through. And that's what we do here at ION. We can walk you through the process. Um, but you have to have something to diagnose. You know, we we give you a lot of tools, but if you just sit there and be like, oh, well, what do I do next? If you didn't get out in the dirt and start panhandling, you'll never get gold in your plate. <laughs> um, and that would be the one critique I would give anybody. It's like, you know, it's like, be willing to jump in, you know, be willing to get wet, be willing to, to do it. What you're able to leverage here at ION is the fact that you're already working with people who, who are doing it and they do it every day. And so you can speak to someone with the success that you're leveraging our success. But look, I don't have to have all the answers, but I got a guy that's going to definitely make sure that this is the right deal for you. I just got to get y'all guys together and we're, and we're going to rock and roll. And so, but you have to just be willing to just be, be there for people. This is a service industry. Um, this is a people's industry. And as long as you're putting people first, it's not about the lead or where you got it from. It's a person. I know my people by the person they are. Um, the phone call, you know, they're they're in my personal phone where, hey, I can reach out to them. Like if I see the call, as long as it's during respectful hours, you know, they're going to get a response back from me. And um, if you follow those types of steps and work the business that way, you will attract more business to you. Absolutely. And and that's the thing we, we we attract you know this is an attraction business it's like okay if i helped you you know there's nothing for you to call back later and be like okay well who else do you know in the area you know right. what's next on deck <laughs> you know <laughs> simple questions you'll know say and you know a little you know, a couple of notes here and there and it's like hey they're like wow you remember that yes i remember that you know yeah and uh, you know we, we build we build and grow together. So that that's kind of my two cents on it. Absolutely. Outlook on on the industry as, as a whole. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you're you're getting it from a from a terrific source, everybody. I mean, Christopher, to me, really encapsulates what it is an experienced broker should be doing, what their mindset should be, and how they should be functioning. You know, so if you want to be that person, if you want to be that finished product. Don't try and reinvent the wheel. The wheel's already been invented, right? Leverage a mentor, just like Christopher, you join ION. Christopher could end up being your mentor. And what you're able to do is learn from experienced individuals, just like Christopher said, who do this every single day and learn how they function and operate so that you can function and operate in the same way and you will achieve success, right? If you want to get the results successful people have just copy what they do and you'll get those same results. It's, it's really straightforward, you know, but if you just take the basic description of a business and how it operates and then try and figure it out for yourself, it's not that you can't do it. It's that the cost of trial and error, the cost of time and the actual monetary cost is just outrageous. Don't do that. Expedite the journey. Okay, you can do that here at ION. Anyway, Christopher, thank you very much for taking time out of your day to, to work on this stuff with, right, with me you. today. Um, I hope there's value here for anybody watching. And if you're interested in learning more about ION Capital Solutions, you want to have a chat with us, all you have to do is uh, click the links in the description, reach out, and we'll hop on a call. All right? That'll do all it right. for me. Christopher, thank you so much. Appreciate it, brother. All right. We'll see you, everybody. Take care.